It is you, the people, who are the court of last resort. The place was a remote mountain town in Arizona. The date was September 10th, 1952. And the time, 3 p.m. This man's name was Juan Morales, an unemployed mechanic. This woman was Mary Morales, Juan's wife. And this man, a stranger. The charge was murder. The sentence, life. And this was the prisoner. Not Juan Morales, but his wife, Mary. For six years, she swore she was innocent. Her appeals did no good. The conviction stood, guilty of murder in the second degree. But was she? Was she guilty? And then she found a final hope. The court of last resort is actually at work today, investigating cases throughout the United States. Its board of investigators, a group of seven men, experts in law and criminology bound together in their dedication to improving the administration of justice. The Court of Last Resort had received a letter and a transcript of the trial of Mary Morales. The material had been sent by a newspaper publisher in a small Arizona town, a man named Stevens, who had become interested in their case. And what he had to say interested us. The court sent me, Sam Larson, to conduct an investigation. This one was a strange case. The way it happened. And especially the identity of the person who had been shot. First, I wanted to hear the story from Mary Morales. And you have come all the way from New York just to hear my story. It's strange. It's very strange. Why? For six years, not one person has come in here and asked me, how did it happen? What is the truth? Suppose you start at the beginning, Mrs. Morales. The beginning? Yes. We were just going to go through this little town. We had come from Texas, Laredo, where we were born. Juan, my husband, our little Manuel and me. My husband Juan could get no work. His hands were ready, but no one would hire him. Why not? We are Mexicans. They are afraid if they gave us work that we would stay. We were just a little way from this town when it happened. The truck broke down. Our money ended. And little Manuel was very sick again. We found this little shack by the side of the road and we moved in without asking. Then things began to get very bad for us. How's the boy? He is worse. Oh. Um, we have to take him to that clinic. That clinic the man told us about. It's a hundred miles. 
How'd we get there? The truck? The axle is cracked. It's good for two, three miles. Know what it'll cost to go 100 miles? $15 for an axle? A used one. Grease, gas, oil. You need at least $25 to get to the clinic. Then for the love of heaven, get it! How? Huh? How? You think I want this? To sit here and not be able to help my boy? You know what it does to a man? Do you think that is going to help? Helps me forget things the way they are. Juan, you have to look at life the way it is. I'm tired of it, Maria. All my life, bad luck. For two years, my hand is no good. I thought, when it gets well, I will work again. Now I can work, nobody wants me. You are being a coward, Juan. Maria! I could understand when your hand was bad. Now it is over. Now you want a new kind of sickness. Stop accusing me! I do what I can! I'm tired of hearing you talk about it. You're tired of hearing me talk about it? Well, I am tired of saying it! Where are you going? I am going into town. What for? To beg. Beg. I could not bring myself to beg. Not yet. I needed courage. I thought perhaps if I could have a cup of coffee inside me, I would be able to do it. You ain't been through here in quite a while, friend. Been driving the Ogden route lately. You uh, got a full old truck this trip? Loaded. And I had to break her hard down those hills. Here comes one of them tomorrow, Yeah, Mexico. Don't have no use for them. Never did. They don't belong in this town. Coffee. Anything wrong, ma'am? Oh, no, nothing. I... Well, it kind of looked like something. You're uh, from New Mexico, aren't you? Texas. Laredo. Oh, is that so? I was born in Texas. That sort of makes us neighbors. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I'm a married man and got four kids. I'm just passing through here. Uh, I know it's none of my business, but you know, maybe you'd feel better if you'd talk it out. Uh, there's a table over here. It was the first time in a long time that anything nice had happened to me. That someone has seemed to care. I just needed someone to listen to me, just to listen. I see. So after that, I told him everything, everything. And he didn't say a word. He just listened. And so, now we have to take little Manuel to the clinic in Rivertown. You people have had it rough. Miss Morales, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm hauling a load of potatoes, and I'm going the other way. But, uh, you take this. It's only five dollars. No, I couldn't. Well, why not? Go ahead. Would not be right. Well, it wouldn't be right for you to beg, either. And I'm not gonna let you, either. You just keep that. Seems to be. I said, get out. I said, get out before I blow your head off. Juan, listen. Listen to what? I can see. Taking money from strangers, sitting close to them. Juan! Now I know. Picking up men. Juan, it is not what you think. You saw. Both of you, huh? 
You saw it, didn't you? From now on, you are not my wife. Do you understand? I have no wife. No more. no credit. Just one drink. I swear I'll pay you back. No credit. Now get out of here. Juan! Maria. You should not have said those things to me, Juan. You should not have said such things. Put down the gun. You shamed me, Juan. Maria, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. But give me the gun. You did. You know you did. Give it to me. Before you hurt yourself! <laughs> You Mexican? You killed her. No, no. I did not know. The story, Mr. Larson, the whole story, the truth. It was an accident. I did not mean to kill that poor woman. How did your husband happen to have a gun in the first place, Mrs. Morales? Well, he kept it in the car. Sometimes he would shoot an animal for us to eat. It was what you call an automatic. I have seen Juan use it. I thought I knew how to use it, how to empty it. I did not know there was another bullet in that gun. You told them this at the trial? The trial? I tried to tell them, but there were witnesses, all against me. She knew the gun was loaded. Anybody could see that. He came in at her and she fired. Only accident I could see was that she missed her husband and killed Mrs. Collier. Yes, sir. I'm almost positive. Just before she went out and got the gun, she said, I'm going to kill him. Just like Al Henry said, I heard her say the same thing. I'm going to kill him. They all lied, Mr. Larson. Everyone. And the jury, they believed them. And your husband, what happened to him? Juan. No man has ever suffered for his wife like my Juan. After they put me in prison, he took little Manuel and went back to Laredo. For four years he worked, day and night, saving every cent, so that finally he might come back to that town and try to prove to them that I did not mean to kill that woman. I see. He's there now? Yes. I guess they felt a little sorry for him then. For two years he has worked as a mechanic, but all the time trying to speak to those witnesses who were against me, trying to tell them it was an accident, even hiring lawyers. But it did no good. Well, what interested the court of last resort, Mrs. Morales, is that you were charged with murder instead of manslaughter, accidental killing. Do you know why? Ask them. Ask the people in that town. They lied about me. They sent me here. Ask them. The people of the town, she said. Perhaps the place to start was with the man who knew them best, John Stevens, the publisher of the Weekly Guardian, and the man who had contacted the Court of Lies Resort. I was just a young reporter when the case was tried, Mr. Larson, but I never forgot it. Got interested in Mary Morales for a couple of reasons. First one was the gun. What about the gun? If Mrs. Morales had planned murder, why did she bother to empty the gun? The shells were found? Hmm, on the seat of their truck. But the jury believed that she purposely left one bullet in the chamber, the one that killed Mrs. Collier. Well, 
There was still enough to persuade a reasonable jury that the shooting was accidental. Mm -hmm. The court appointed a young lad fresh out of law school. He did as well as he could, but even so, Mrs. Collier, the victim, was very popular in this town. And the Morales were strangers. Mexicans, you mean. Folks can get pretty narrow-minded. I guess they took their hate out on Mary Morales. In other words, this was really a lynch mob. Put it that way. That's why I wrote your outfit. Mr. Stevens, did you ever bring this to the attention of the public through your newspaper? I tried. All these years, I only worked for the paper, Mr. Larson. I tried to get my boss to run something on it, but he wouldn't touch it. Why not? Well, the feeling was running pretty high. He was afraid folks would boycott the Guardian, cancel their subscriptions. Six months ago, I took over the paper. And I've gotten to know Juan Morales. I think he's an honest man, and I'll print any story that'll help him, if it's true. All right. I'll go to see him. See what his side of the story is. Thanks very much. What can I say? It was my fault. All my fault. Maria didn't know anything about guns. She did not know the gun was loaded. All she was trying to do was to give me a scare. I tried to tell this to everyone in the town. It was like talking to a wall. Maybe we can help you break down that wall. I've heard of the court of last resort, Mr. Larson. I am grateful. I wish I'd heard from that lawyer. If I had, maybe Maria would be free now. now what lawyer is this? Well, after it happened, they put me in jail for a couple of weeks as a witness. I tried to sell my truck from inside the jail to get money to get a lawyer to help Maria. Deputy. Deputy. Now, what do you want? What is the name of that lawyer on Main Street near the post office? Uh, I saw the sign, but I don't remember the name. Oh, you mean Joe Andrews? Yeah, that one. Please give him this for me, huh? Now, why should I? Give me a chance. All I want for my wife is a good lawyer. Please, give this to Mr. Andrews. I never heard from that lawyer, Mr. Larson. He never answered my letter. Where can I find this man, Joe Andrews? Two years ago, I came back here. First, I tried to see Mr. Andrews. I found that Mr. Andrews was dead. Oh. I never got a chance to find out why he never answered my letter. Do you know whether Joe Andrews ever got that letter, Mr. Whaley? Letter? What letter? The one Juan Morales says he gave to you to give Andrews. That bum can say anything he likes. It's his word against mine. Now, look, Larson, why don't you go on and get out of here? I'm a busy man. Why don't you tell him the truth, Clint? Well, what are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. But, Bert, you keep your mouth shut. I've kept it shut for six years. I ain't gonna let you push me around anymore. If it wasn't for you, Mary Morales might have got a better deal. Now, if you don't tell the man the truth, I will. Well, I... Let's hear what he has to say, Whaley. Well, this Morales fellow gave Clint here a letter to Joe Andrews. A letter asking Andrews to act as lawyer for his wife. Clint never delivered it. He tore it up. I saw him do it. Well, why didn't you say or do something? It's kind of hard to swim against the tide. Nobody in this town would have raised a finger to help them Mexicans. I guess not me either. Well, it's been six years. Time sort of buries your conscience. I should have spoken up long ago. But I'm talking now. This was the first break in the wall. An admission that the barest essential of justice had been denied Mary and Juan Morales. That they had been refused their right to counsel of their own choice. The Weekly Guardian broke the story in banner headlines. The story ripped the town wide open, 
And this gave us the second break in the case. It revived the long buried guilt of an entire town, an ugly wound which time had not healed. Then I started to hammer at the witnesses who had sent Mary Morales to prison. All right, all right, she didn't pull the trigger. He grabbed her arm and the gun went off. What difference does it make? Then it was an accident. The shooting wasn't deliberate. I don't care what it was. Mrs. Collier's dead, isn't she? Look, mister, I told you. It sounded to me like she said, I'm going to kill him. I see. It sounded that way, but you're not sure. Well, there was a lot of excitement around. I, I thought that's what she said. But in court, you swore it, under oath. She meant to kill him. I saw her go after the gun. What difference does it make what she said? All I want is the truth, Mrs. Burns. What did Mary Morales really say? It happened a long time ago. It's over and done with. I have nothing to say. Mr. Lawson. I'm an old woman. I have much longer to go. Perhaps you're right. Perhaps it is the time for the truth. A week later, John Stevens and I drove to the county seat to attend a meeting in the chambers of the judge who had tried the case against Mary Morales. And in short, Your Honor, my investigation shows that the deputy sheriff prevented Mr. and Mrs. Morales from contacting counsel of their own choice. And furthermore, these affidavits throw great doubt upon the truth of the testimony against her at the trial. Mr. Larson. Yes, sir. Personally, I wouldn't put too much stock in these affidavits. Well, they specifically state... I know, I know, but that was six years ago. The witness's memory can get pretty foggy. I'll take the trial records against these affidavits any time. But if the accused was denied counsel of her own choice? But the sheriff denied he tore up the letter. Juan Morales said that he gave him the letter to deliver. But does Morales' word count? He's an interested party. It makes it Bert Stiles' word against Clint Whaley's. Still, I might be impressed by the new evidence that Mr. Larson has unearthed. These affidavits tend to show that Mrs. Morales might have been guilty only of manslaughter. I agree, Your Honor, that if a person accidentally kills another, it isn't murder. But it is murder if she meant to kill her husband and fate sent the bullet into Mrs. Collier. And that's exactly what happened. I'm afraid I'll have to go along with the prosecutor on that point. Are you asking us to believe that she thought the gun was unloaded, that the killing itself was accidental? Your Honor, here is an exact duplicate of the murder weapon. Would you kindly examine it, please? The gun is fully loaded now. Now, will you please unload it, sir? I'm afraid I don't understand very much about these. I'm... Just push this button. That's it. Now the gun is empty. I believe that's obvious. the gun was empty, too. But when it comes to a gun, you never can tell. Now, this is an automatic, Your Honor. You removed the magazine, so did she. But you both forgot that there was a bullet left in the chamber. And that is my point, sir. Mary Morales made the same mistake as you did, Judge. A mistake that anyone could make. For six years, an entire town had lived in guilt. But now its conscience was aroused. And for Mary Morales, there will be a new trial. And justice.